Blend If can be used to make phenomenal double exposures. No matter if you're using the more traditional double exposure where there's some item inside someone's face or this type of double exposure where you're actually blending two exposures more like it would look in camera if you were to do it that way. And you can also use Blend If to replace backgrounds in a really unique and easy way. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about how to take multiple exposures and blend them together to get creative looks in your images. And we're gonna dive right in. So the first image that I have here is this image here where we're gonna take this photo and we're gonna apply it to this woman here. And then this one where we're gonna combine this woman with more of this cityscape type of feel. And then this one where we take this guy and we put this texture behind him. And we're gonna do all of that with Blend If. Now I do have to apologize. My voice voice is practically shot. It was an insane Super Bowl last night. If you caught that, the Chiefs and the Eagles, uh, incredible. And Kansas City was on fire. So uh, the the uh, the lamp is lit red for our buddy Mahomes. Let's jump into this. So looking at this exposure, what we want to do here is we want to take this and combine it with this. And there's many ways to do this. Uh, a lot of times people use masking, like select subject to, to do that. And we can combine multiple techniques. Just because you use Blend Diff doesn't mean you have to use uh, doesn't mean you can't use masks or blend modes. And uh, I use mask, blend modes, and blend if all together in all of my images. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you kind of how blend if works. And then we're going to use the blend if panel to do that. And for the rest of this, I'm going to use the blend if panel. So uh, the easiest way to think about blend if is when we double click on a layer like this, we go into what's called the layer styles. Now this controls where all the blending and how this layer interacts with everything below. You'll see that there's things like bevel and emboss and all this stuff here. That's really just for uh, people who are you know doing text and maybe doing some graphic design stuff. I don't really use much of any of this stuff down here with the exception of color overlay uh, to show blend if. So the rest of this, the, all the other stuff, you don't really need to think about too much because this stuff is actually contained right here. So all we're really looking at is this space right here for blend if. And it's really just a way that we can make two layers blend together based on the tonal values that are represented in that image. Now, when we do this, so the, we have to think about what we're doing to the underlying layer or or what the underlying layer is doing with the layer above it. How I like to envision this is protect the underlying layers, black areas. So if I think of that, protect the underlying layers, black areas, as I move this over, the black from the underlying layer will show through. Protect the underlying layers, highlights, the underlying layers, highlights are going to start to show through. And you can see that even doing it like this, We've done a phenomenal thing here by by applying this just to those highlight areas and moving that over to an extent that we don't even really need to use much of a mask anymore in order to get this into her face. We wouldn't even need to use like a select subject mask or anything like that. It's already done via Blend If. Okay, so now how would I do this on my new Blend If panel? Well, there's a couple buttons here that can help you out pretty easily. And this is kind of how I get the creative juices flowing when I'm using the Blend If panel. I'll ask myself, what tonal values am I trying to protect? Well, if I want this to protect the black areas, then I'm going to press this button. And that will ensure that none of the dark areas underneath this image are affected. If I press this button, it's only going to take this image and put it into the dark layers. So very similar to what we just did in Blend If to try and get it just on her face. Okay. Now if we go to the other side. Let's actually do only midtones first. Only midtones is going to apply this image onto her face and kind of create that double exposure look uh, and make sure that the midtone values are the only things that are being affected by this adjustment. If we only want this to go into the highlight areas, then we would press this button. And if we don't want this to affect the highlight areas, we would press this button. And you start to see how we can blend here. Now, it doesn't stop there. So once I get this kind of set up to where I want it to be, let's just say uh, we liked it the way it was like this, where it was only in the dark areas and we want to blend this into our face. Now, I could also use these sliders here, and this gives me access to Blend If right here inside of Photoshop without actually having to double click and go into the layer styles. So once I get this set up to where I want it to be, I can start extending out these adjustments here to see if I want to include more of those highlight areas or less of those highlight areas into this image. And then from there, it really just becomes, well, what else do I want to do with this? Do I want to maybe use a blend mode on here like soft light so that it's a blend of the two images with the blend mode soft light so that some of the uh, more uh, darker and highlight areas start to show through that? Or maybe I want that to just stay normal and just drop the opacity here a little bit. And as I said, you can still use masking with this too. 
So let's say I like the way this is on her face. I'm going to press V for the move tool and I'm going to move this around so we can get that mountain kind of just right there on her lips. Now I'm going to need to make this a little bit larger to do that. So control zero and then I'll go on the outside here and just make this a little bit larger like that. And then now this mountain is pretty much going right along the edge of her lip like that. And that is a really cool way to blend these exposures. But again, like I said, if we didn't want this to affect maybe her eyes, okay, I'm going to zoom in here and then I'll use my brush beef my brush tool, get a smaller brush, softer brush, and just kind of slowly, and I'm using a Wacom tablet so I can slowly just kind of delicately paint in on this image where maybe I don't want that to affect. So that's a really creative use for making that double exposure kind of look. That's kind of the new age double exposure where you're taking two images and you're combining them together as if the one image exists within the space of the individual. Now, this isn't really something that would happen in camera. Uh, in camera, when you do a double exposure, you're taking an exposure for one image and then you move the camera and you take an exposure for another image. I used to practice this all the time uh, when I was younger, when I would work with analog film, I would take one exposure and then I would roll the film back. And then when I rolled the film back, I would take another exposure. It was very difficult, but you could, you could get it done to an extent. These days, it's a lot easier to get that same type of effect, and we'll do that with BlendIf. So now, looking at this image, let's take a look at what's happening here. Uh, we want this image to go inside of this image, and if we look at this, where do we want it to go? Well, we definitely don't want it to go into the highlights of this photograph below. We really want this to go into the shadow areas of the photograph below. So I'm going to press this button, which will ensure that it only goes into those shadow areas. Now, with BlendIf set up the way it is, I have a couple options with this blend diff panel. I can click inside here and I can move this slightly over to each side to see if I'm going to get a different look that I might like. And you'll see that it grabs the points and kind of gangs them together and moves them over in the exact way or ratio that we had set. Another option is for me to press and hold shift and move this over. And what that will do is it will take the whole thing and move it over for me. That's something that you just can't do in blend diff. And it's something that you can really only do in this blend diff panel to see if you can get some different ideas here when you're working with this. Now, I definitely like this when it was pegged more this way. And I think that looks pretty cool. And then again, we could, we could experiment a little bit further with this, like maybe drop the opacity of this a little bit more. Okay. Or because we have a color image on top of a black and white image, uh, let's make this image that we're putting on top of the other one a black and white image. So to do that, I have a couple options. I can put a gradient map on top of it, which is something I really do enjoy. Uh, or I could just completely desaturate it by pressing Control or Command Shift and U, and that'll desaturate that layer. It's obviously not the best way to make a black and white conversion. So you can press Command or Control Z, and then maybe I'll do it this way with the gradient map, and with that gradient map set to black and white, and then we can have this set to perceptual, linear, or classic. I kind of like the classic look. That looks really good. And if I wanted this to only affect that area, Alt or Option click, and it will make sure that, that gradient map only goes into this layer here. And you see how now these two layers are combined. It's, it's kind of an interesting story that's happening here about this individual that is within this crazy, hustling, bustling city that maybe just wants to slow down a little bit. You know, this look of like, oh, I just need a break. I just need to relax. But I got all this stuff going on around me. And how much can we relate to that? And that's why I like double exposures, because I think that they can help us tell a story within an image in a really unique way that wouldn't have happened if we didn't experiment a little bit with combining multiple exposures. And again, just using that blend if panel to uh, to experiment and play around a little bit with these sliders to see what we like. So now let's take a look at this image and see how we can get this layer into the background of this layer here. Now this is actually a mid journey rendered texture here. If you go, if you use mid journey or AI image generation, you can get some pretty interesting looking textures that I thought worked really well for uh, this very regal looking individual with this texture here. So looking at the blend if panel here, uh, we have a couple options here. If we go ahead and take a look at how this is going to affect the underlying image, it looks like the underlying image is a lot of midtones in the background there. And we can actually use a mask to combine things if we want to as well. So we look at the underlying layers here. We can go ahead and press these buttons here and see what kind of effects we get. We will only want this to go into the, the shadow areas of the image below. We don't want this to go in the shadow areas of the image below. You see, if we do want it, there's a check mark. If we don't want it, there's an X. Only the midtones of the layer below. That's actually pretty interesting. 
only the highlights of the layer below and no highlights from the layer below. Again, very interesting. Now, once we have this set and we get a kind of base for it, we're like, ooh, I, I kind of like that. It's just a way for us to experiment and see what we like about how this image is working. And here, I can maybe come in here and blend this a little bit better like this and get those two blended pretty well together there. Have that come in through the shadows and have that come in through uh, on the highlights there. Again, we can move this over and see if it's going to give us a better look if it's shifted a little bit like this. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. Now, if we don't like the way the texture is coming across on the face, which I really don't like how the texture is coming across on the face, um, I can either use a custom mask and paint in off the areas where I don't want that to affect, or I can actually use a very deliberate thing like select subject. So if I go up to select and I go to subject, that will select this individual and ensure that I can get a good mask for him so that I can blend the two of them better. If I want to make sure that that mask is really good, I can go into select and mask and see what the mask is that I'm going to get. And I might even experiment here with the smart radius and then just move that up just a little bit, just a tad bit. And that does a pretty good job of blending them. When you're doing texture blending, it doesn't have to be that perfect anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So now this selection is only for this individual here. So when I do click on this, and if I do apply a mask from this selection to this, it's only gonna be for the individual. So I have two options. I can either apply this mask and then invert it later, or I can press Alt or Option and click on this mask and it's automatically the inverted version of that. And now you see we have a really awesome texture that matches this dude's personality really well. And we can go ahead and drop the opacity here too if we want that to kind of just push away into the background a little bit. What you've seen here is that Blendif is an extremely powerful tool that we can use to blend layers in multiple different ways. And this is really just me experimenting with things in Photoshop. You should experiment with these things as well because I guarantee you'll come up with 150 uses for Blendif. Remember, don't limit yourself to just using Blendif. You know, we are in Photoshop. We're not in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. So we have access to masks, very easy, powerful masks. We have access to blend modes. We have access to opacity. All of these things can be used to make really unique and interesting blended exposures. If you're interested in this panel I've created, I'm gonna put a link for it right here, also in the description down below. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple, and sometimes even revolutionize things that Adobe themselves hasn't even made accessible for us. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it.